Okay, this week we are going to start graphing quadratic functions. So we're going to graph these parabolas. But first, I want you guys to know some interesting things. So um, pull out this page that says Algebra Notes at the top. And I want you to rewrite this equation for A down here where we have some room. So go to the bottom of your page and rewrite that the f of x equals x squared minus 6 x plus 9. Okay, if I told you guys to um, factor this, you would probably be able to come up with two sets of parentheses, I hope you could by now, um, that when they factor it would add to become negative 6x and multiply to be positive 9. So think about that for a minute. What can you add to get negative 6x but multiply to get positive 9? First we've got the x's, and I think it would be negative 3, negative 3, I think, yes, because negative 3, so negative 3 and negative 3, if you add them, they become negative 6, and if you multiply them, they are positive 9, so minus 3, minus 3, and if I said they're equal to 0, branch it off, solve it, do the whole x minus 3 equals 0 or x minus 3 equals 0, you would end up solving it and what you would get is you would actually get that x equals 3 or, guess what, that x equals 3. And so if x either equals 3 or 3, then it only has one answer. It has that x equals 3. So I want you guys to look at the three graphs and look at the graph for a where it says x equals 3. So in this picture, if you look on the x-axis, because that was where x was, it was talking about how x equals 3, x equals 1, 2, 3, right there. That is the vertex. That's the only spot on the x-axis that this parabola touches. So that's why there was only one solution. x only equaled 3. It didn't equal 3 and something else because x only touches, or sorry, our parabola only touches the x-axis at only 3. Okay, let's kind of do that. Well, okay, so let's go ahead and answer this first question. For graph A, the related quadratic equation is factorable. We factored it. And once we factored it, we found that there was only one solution and the solution was that x equaled 3. Okay, let's do now the same thing with b. So b's equation, I'm going to write it down below. So that was a. All right, so b's equation is the f of x equals x squared plus 2x plus 3. All right, I want you guys to see if this one is factorable. So what can we, obviously we know x is at the beginning, what can we turn this into? We need it to add up to 2 and multiply to get 3. So my initial reaction is 2 and 1, but if we did 2 and 1, then that would get us 3x, no, that won't work because we have to multiply to get 3, so that would be 2. So then we're going to try 3 and 1. And 3 times 1 is 3, and we need this to be 2x, so we could do positive 2, negative 3, or sorry, positive 3, negative 1, but there's a problem with that. When you multiply the lasts, positive 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, and we needed it to be positive 3. So is there anything that will work to where we could put them here and make it to where when we add we get positive 2 and where we multiply we get positive 3? You can think about it for a little bit if you want, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you the answer is no. This is an example of something that is not factorable. No matter what numbers you try, you're never going to be able to come up with anything that works for this particular function. So let's go up and take a look at what that means as far as the graph goes. The graph for B, where did it touch the x-axis? Here's the x-axis. 
it doesn't touch it anywhere. And that is because it is not factorable. There aren't any actual solutions because the solutions would be where it touches the x-axis and it doesn't. So for graph B, the quadratic equation is not factorable. How many solutions were there? Well, again, solutions is um, where it touches the x-axis, so there are none. No solutions because it doesn't touch the x-axis anywhere and we can't name the solutions because there aren't any, so that's not applicable. So I'm just gonna put in A. All right, last one on this notes page. So I'm gonna take this equation and just write it down below. So for C, we have f of x equals x squared plus x minus two. All right, let's see if we can factor this one. So what can we add to get one because that's a 1x, and multiply to get negative 2 at the end. Obviously, x's would be at the beginning. So I am thinking probably 2 and 1, and because we need to multiply and get a negative, one of them needs to be negative, but when we add them, we need it to be a positive, so I need my bigger number to be positive. So let's check. When we add 2 and negative 1, you get positive 1, which that works. And when we multiply 2 and negative 1, you get negative 2. So that works. So this is the answer. So if I had you guys branch this off and do either x plus 2 equals 0 or x minus 1 equals 0, and you solved both of those, you would end up getting x equals negative 2 and x equals 1. So our solutions are going to be negative 2 and 1. So let's take a look at our parabola. It crosses the x-axis at negative 2 and 1. Interesting. Okay, so on our answer here, it says um, for graph C, it is factorable. We factored it. How many solutions are there? There were two this time because it touched the x-axis in two different points and the solutions were x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 1. Alright, these are the three types of quadratic graphs we're going to do today. There might be one that only touches the x-axis in one spot, like A. There might be some that are not factorable that don't touch the x-axis at all and there might be some that touch the x-axis in two spots, and that would be um, two solutions. All right, so take the paper um, and let's turn it over. All right, so on the back, I wanna also show you, if you don't wanna factor it, how we can do this with just a basic x and y table, too. So, um, this is one that is not a trinomial, so we're not going to factor it. We're just going to graph it by coming up with a little x and y axis over here, or x and y, sorry, table over here. Um, let's choose, really we only need to choose three. We only need to choose a couple of negatives and maybe a zero because everything reflects over. And actually, you know what, I'm, I'm looking at this graph going... Um, Probably it's going to be somewhere over here and maybe not even reflecting over the axis. So let's choose, um, let's try to choose negative 10, negative 6, and negative 2 just to spread it out. So we'll choose negative 10, negative 6, and negative 2. All right. Um, negative 10. So again, all, all I'm doing right now is just going and plugging it into my equation. So negative 10 is going to be x. So negative 10 squared is positive 100 times 3 is 300. We will not be able to put that dot on there. Now I want to try negative 6. Negative 6 squared is 36. And I have no idea what 36 times 3 is. Let me get a calculator. All right, so 36 times 3. Um, that is 108. So we're not going to be able to graph that one either. Maybe we chose kind of poorly. All right, that's all right. Sorry, guys, that's my fault. Negative 2. Let's say we're going to choose negative 2 this time. Negative 2 squared is positive 4 
times 3 is 12. Okay, we got 1. Let's graph a dot there. Negative 2, 12. All right, I'm sorry, we got to keep going. I just assumed it was going to be big. I should have worked these out ahead of time. Didn't, sorry. Now let's try negative 1. Negative 1 squared is positive 1 times 3 is 3. This is much better. Negative 1, 3, and 0. 0 squared is 0 times 3 is 0. All right. Um, if we choose a positive one, just to make sure that's where it reflects, because honestly, it could keep going down further. We don't know where the axis, or sorry, the vertex is. We maybe should have done that first, um, but we'll keep going with one. One times one is one, times three is three, so that's where it starts to open back up. So then we don't have to even work out the last one because it's a parabola, which means it is reflecting. All right. Okay, um, let's try number two. I will not put you guys through that choosing big numbers thing. It just threw me off that there's so much space over there. All right, number two, let's draw a mini table and let's go ahead and graph our parabola. So um, that's going to be a half, but that's okay. Let's try, let's just try negative one and zero and maybe one for now. We may have to do a few more here in a minute. Okay, we'll see. Negative 1 squared, be sure you guys are using order of operations, square it first and then go back and multiply by negative half. So negative 1 squared is positive 1 times negative half is negative half. I'll call it negative 0.5. 0 times anything is 0 times the rest is 0. 1 squared is going to be 1 times negative half is negative half. Okay, so we found a couple of points, but that's not enough. You guys always need to try to find at least five points on your parabola. So let's choose two also. All right, two squared is four. Four times negative half is negative two. All right, here we go. Let's graph these now. Negative one, negative half. Negative one, negative half. 0, 0, 1, negative half, 2, negative 2. All right, and we can go ahead and plot um, the one over here also because what you know is that it's reflective. Once you find that axis of symmetry, all the dots on the right side of it reflect over to the left side of it. So without even doing the math, we know that there would also be a coordinate right there. All right, graph it, graph it. Okay, um, let's do at least one more together. Number three, I think it might be a good idea to go ahead and see if this one is factorable. Um, yeah, let's see if this one's factorable. So if first thing we do is you have to pull out a negative. Anytime the A term is negative, it tells you that it opens down but it also is not going to be factorable to begin with. We need to pull it out and then see if it's factorable. So if we pulled out the negative, that would be positive x squared minus 2x minus 1. So is there anything that we can factor? I think there is. Where when we add, we get negative 2x, and when we multiply, we get negative 1. Hmm. Let's see, I think 1 and 1, because when we add, we get negative 2, but when we multiply, we get negative 1. I would say my gut reaction would be to do negative 1, negative 1, because when we add those, it's negative 2, but when we multiply, a negative times a negative is actually a positive, so this won't work. So this is not factorable. So I hope you guys remember what not factorable means. That means that we will not have two roots for it. If it's not factorable, it ends up being off of the x-axis somewhere up here. So we are going to have to create a table and see where it's at. All right, let's just choose 0, 1, and 2. Let's choose some positive um, numbers. So when we plug in 0, it needs to be for this x and also for this x. 
So 0 squared is going to be 0, so that part's gone. 0 times 2 is 0, but then we have plus 1, so that would be 1. All right, then let's go back up in here and try 1. 1 squared is 1, but then we have a negative that attached itself to it, so we have negative 1. 2 times 1 is 2, and then we've got that plus 1 over here. So negative 1 plus 2 plus 1, that is 2. All right, and then last one, 2 squared is 4, but then we've got that negative attaching itself to it. You should always look at this like it's in parentheses. So do that first, and then it's like it's being multiplied by a negative hidden invisible 1. So 2 times 2 is 4, but it's negative 4, plus 2 times 2, which is 4, plus 1. All right, those will cancel, so we've got 1. All right, let's go plot these and see what happens. 0, 1 is right here. 1, 2 is right here. 2, 1 is right here. So we have basically found our vertex. Um, actually, I'm really glad we're doing this. Let's pick 3 real quick, just because I want you guys to see what's going to happen. So 3 squared is 9, but then there's that negative. Negative 9 plus 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1. So negative 9 plus 6 is negative 3, plus 1 is negative 2. So let's plot a point at 3, negative 2. 3, negative 2. All right, so we could reflect that over. It's somewhere over here. So here's what I want you guys to see. It actually does have roots. It's not factorable, but I'll show you why. All right, if we were to have tried to factor it, I guess it would have, you could have come up with some decimally things in here because it would have ended up having answers at, let's say, 2.66666 something and negative 0.66666 something there. So sometimes there are some that are not factorable, but not because they don't pass through the x-axis, but only because they don't pass through at exact um, solutions, at exact intersecting like numbers. They come out to be weird decimals. So sometimes, even though it's not factorable, there, it still may go through. All right, so I am going to stop the video, and for your homework today, I want you guys to try 4, 5, and 6. Um, I know I asked the sub to go ahead and give you this worksheet too. Um, so I do want to do at least one in a few sections because you're going to have a few of these for homework too. So go ahead and circle, go back to this page. So do try four, try five, and try six for homework. So those three on your own. And then on this page, um, oh my gosh, this is going to go so fast. So let me do one in each section so you know what it's asking. On 10.2, it says find the values of what numbers would be A, B, and C. So a is 6, we've already done this, this is a review, B is 3, C is 5. Okay, so that's all it's asking, your A term coefficient, your B term coefficient, and the C term constant. So just name those. Um, in this one, it's super easy, it's just asking if the graph opens upward or downward, and then find the axis of symmetry in the vertex. So I'll do one with you, but then I'm not going to make you do all of these, so here you go. So this graph obviously opens up because the A term is positive. And then to find the axis of symmetry, the axis of symmetry, that is negative B, or sorry, opposite B over 2A. So that, in this case, there is no B term because it would be, it would be the one that has an X but not squared and not just the number, the constant by itself. So there's no B term over 2 times 1 is 2. So the axis of symmetry is 0. A, O, S, 0. And then it also said to find the vertex. So that is plugging the axis of symmetry in for X. So 0 squared is 0, minus 5 is negative 5. So vertex is 0, comma, negative 5. Okay, you just had a quiz over this. So these three things should be pretty easy. But because we just had a quiz over it, I'm only going to have you guys do the first six. So draw a line under number 12.
and you do not need to do any of the bottom part. And then we are going to save the back for when I am back on Tuesday. So this part, don't, don't cross it off, but just you can write Tuesday on it if you'd like. All right, so your homework is um, the three on this graph page, four, five, and six, and then one through 12 on this side, um, which should be a review for you. Okay, good luck. See you guys tomorrow.